Okay, so let's go over the uh, modifications I've made to the body. Uh, the modifications so far, uh, as far as what I'm going to do to the body, is complete. Uh, it's technically ready for paint, but uh, let's go over what I've done so far. Okay, so um, I've taken and widened this and straightened it out because uh, it as you remember it was crooked filled in this hole that was extra for some reason don't know why it was extra but it was there uh, I plugged all the holes for the uh, the pick guard because with the new pick guard the holes don't match up at all also I have widened this area in here so I can get full size pots in uh, how it was originally, I could not get full-size pots in there at all. Uh, they would just wedge in real tight. Alright, uh, let's flip uh, the guitar over. Now what I did here for the uh, tummy cut is I just went and smoothed this out so now it's more rounded. A little, just, uh, it's for comfort. That's all it is. Um... Then, in the spring cavity, went ahead and filled in um, the holes where the uh, wood was missing. So I got that squared away. And, again, plugged the holes for the uh, cavity plate. It's a new one. Uh, don't match up. Also, that's a little tougher. I went ahead and uh, plugged the holes here for the screws that went in. They were at such a bad angle, uh, if you tried screwing them down tighter, you would end up in the uh, neck pocket cavity, or the uh, neck pickup cavity in the front. The screws would pop right out there. So I filled those holes and went ahead and made new holes, and now it's uh, it's a lot better. So... That was done. All right. Then here, they had a big hole here. So I went ahead and filled that in, took care of that. Uh, just for comfort purposes, I went ahead and shaved this down. So when you slide your hand in here, it, it feels a whole lot better. It was just a, you know, standard sharp uh, cut. So now it's smoothed out. Just, just comfort that's all it is and then the front side you know did the same thing just a little bit out and again it's just comfort when you get up to those higher frets uh, the neck pocket I end up having to shave about three sixteenths uh, out of the uh, neck pocket just to uh, get the neck sunk down, plus to level out the, uh, the actual pocket itself. Um, it was a bad cut to begin with. Then I went ahead and I cleaned these up. They were roughly cut and just looked like crap. Uh, so I cleaned that up and used some sandpaper rounded off these uh, corners here not required but it just looks a lot better to me uh, plus it'll be a little easier to get that wire down in there when I put the big guard on uh, the cavity for the bridge pickup when I put the neck uh, excuse me the pick guard on with the pickup in it um, this pocket was actually cut too far this way. Let's see if you can see it. It's going too far this way. And when you put the uh, pick guard in with the pickup, it would hit right here and the pickup would sit crooked. You know, like this. So I had to take some out of there. And uh, now when you put the pick guard on, it doesn't hit and the pick guard stays level. Or the pickup stays level in the pick guard. So that is the uh, body modifications. And uh, like I said, this one's ready for paint. 
Um, then when I get it back from paint, then I'll put the uh, pick guard on and uh, get it all put together. Of course, that'll be another video. So uh, that's the story with the uh, Hard Luck King's uh, guitar body uh, so far. Uh, so I'm going to put the neck back on it, show you what I did to the neck, plus an issue I found with the neck. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I'm back. I've got the neck back on. Now with the neck, I had to do quite a bit. Um, and I mentioned to you that I had to take some out of the pocket to level it out, plus I wanted to sink the neck. The heel on this neck was so thick, I ended up taking close to a quarter inch of wood off the heel on this flat surface to get it to sink down far enough to where uh, I can actually use it on this guitar. Uh, it was quite a bit of work. Now let me flip this around. Now here at this area of the neck where it meets up to the body, the, uh, the flat cut from the factory extended out this far. So it was flat all the way from here down. So what I did is I contoured the neck. I've got two different contours here. One for the, uh, the palm of your hand. So this contour is deeper than this contour and this is for your thumb. So that way as you move your hand down the neck it's nice and smooth, gradual, but you got enough meat up here still for your thumb. And then obviously you notice the with the cuts here, hand slides right in. So, yeah, it was just a comfort thing. So I did that and, uh, you know, put some time into it to get it uh, to where I thought it was acceptable. Then, <laughs> um, I put, and keep in mind, I did all this before I actually had a bridge to put on this guitar. And I wanted the bridge that I was using, so I never put strings on it. So I finally got the bridge. There it is. And I had put strings on it, and of course I've taken it apart since then. But I thought something looked funny when I had all the tuners in. Let's go up here to the headstock. See if you can see this. I have to zoom out just a little bit. Uh, when I put the tuners in, I, I thought something looked funny, and I, I just couldn't quite, you know, figure out exactly what it was. And then I put the strings on, <laughs> found a problem. Turns out, this hole's in the correct location. This hole is further away from this hole than it should be. Then subsequently, each hole after that is spaced too far apart. So the time you get over here to the end tuner for the E string or first string uh, what ends up happening let me switch hands here you put the string on and it actually is right on the edge I mean it's a, if you look at it dead on it's actually hanging over right here and it shouldn't be so I got online and found a, the correct template turns out that this hole here for this tuner should be right on the edge of this hole. So that's a big difference and definitely would change the angle of your E string. So at this point I basically got a neck that I've got to plug and again this one's in the right location. I've got to plug these five holes and then re-drill. And then, because I put plugs in, I'd have to paint the headstock. I don't want to paint the headstock, not with this guitar. So, I can still use this neck on a different guitar with a painted headstock. But as far as this build goes, I can't use this neck now. So, I have to get a different neck. Lesson learned here. 
a $35 neck off of Amazon. May look good in the pictures, but once you get it home, you may find you've got some serious issues. So that's the story with the neck. But I definitely wanted to get that in there so you, you're aware of it in case you're thinking of buying a $35 neck off of Amazon. Get a quality neck, it's probably going to cost you about 200 bucks, anywhere between 200 and 300 for one with the uh, holes in the correct locations. Or you can just, you know, get the paddle and uh, cut it yourself and then drill it yourself. Might save you a few bucks, but it definitely costs uh, more in time. So anyway, uh, yeah, this neck, can't use it with this body now. Fun stuff. All right, uh, I'm going to flip back over and uh, get back behind the desk and uh, get into some more issues. Okay, see you in a bit. All right. So as I mentioned that the uh, Hard Luck King's body is basically ready for paint. Uh, I'm not doing any more modifications to it. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact I got to go with a different neck, I would have had more money on my budget to uh, go a little different route on the paint job than what I'm going to do. There is a, a company in Oregon uh, that they're advertising a $200 special uh, during the summer for paint. And they have uh, pearls and metal flake paint. Uh, so I have something in mind and it'll fit my budget. I had a set dollar amount for this guitar build and uh, it's pushing it with a new neck, a different neck. Uh, is definitely going to push it. So that $200 paint job is going to have to do for this guitar. Uh, but as I, I said before, this, unfortunately, things happen. Lesson learned on my part. Uh, a $35 neck off of Amazon or eBay is going to be an imported neck. And quality control is probably asleep at the wheel. So don't plan on the neck that you get for $35 being perfect. Lesson learned the hard way here. You know, shit happens. <laughs> All right, so that was the uh, Hard Luck Kings guitar uh, as far as the update. So let me get this one out of the way. And we'll get this one up here. So this is the uh, Squire by Fender guitar. Now, with this guitar, well, tilt that back just a smidge here. Uh, with this guitar, I really didn't have to do much body work to it at all, other than, uh, you know, just the common things, uh, filling a few holes here uh, because of the new pick guard, uh, drilling some new holes for the new pick guard, uh, drilling holes, uh, and well, plugging holes and drilling new holes for the uh, cavity plate on the back of the guitar. The only thing I really did with this one is I took about three thirty seconds of an inch out of the pocket so I can sink the neck down. Other than that, uh, you know, I put it together without the paint yet, but I put it together so I can test out the electronics, uh, put the uh, Babix uh, full contact trim unit in, got that all set up, tested it all out. Sounds fucking amazing. Um, and I guess I should do some kind of video on these Babix uh, full contact trim units. But uh, just to sum it up real quick. Uh, as far as a scale from 1 to 10, I give it an 8. Uh, it's fairly easy to set up. Feels real good on the palm of your hand. There's nothing sticking out here to uh, give you any issues when your hand's resting on it. Uh, there is a couple things, but when I actually cover uh, this trim unit in more detail, uh, I'll discuss those issues. But as far as price point, 8 out of 10. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good unit. It really is. So 
Uh, this one now is ready for paint. And because I didn't have to switch the neck out, I used the original neck that came with the guitar. Uh, didn't have to do a damn thing to the neck. It was good to go. So uh, with that, I have a lot more uh, monies in the budget for paint. Now, this one, it's, it's going to be two weeks before I send it out because it's going to a custom painter who does uh, guitar bodies, car bodies, so forth. He does some custom tricked out paint. And uh, once I get it to him in two weeks, it's going to be estimated at another six weeks before I get the body back. But it is going to definitely be tricked. It's going to have a one-of-a-kind paint job. And uh, needless to say, this guitar is staying with me uh, in my family. Uh, so, you know, I could spend a little bit more on the paint because, you know, the budget and not having to replace the neck. Uh, it's more than $200 for the paint job on this guitar. Uh, the other guitar, once I get it completed, uh, that guitar is going to a new home. Um, that's all I can really say about that at this point in time. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's going to be right when it uh, leaves my house for its new home. Um, so that's another video. But anyway... I'm trying to keep this short and sweet because, quite honestly, 30-some-odd minutes, you don't want to hear me going on and on and on. Uh, but we'll just say that that's, uh, that's it for uh, part two of this series. And uh, we'll get part three up uh, once, uh, you know, the paint gets back on the Hard Luck King's body. And, you know, I send it out for paint, get it back, and I can start putting it together. Uh, we'll do another video then. But uh, until then, there's really nothing else to cover. Um, so uh, that's the update as of right now. Anyway, uh, till later. Peace, rock on, all that fun stuff.